a huge new continent called Valamor was just released, with tons of highly profitable activities. Just like all the legit players who rush to get rares and new items as quickly as possible while the prices are still high, botters rush to get scripts out while these new activities are still ridiculously profitable. I've been scouting some of the most profitable stuff to start catching bot farms as soon as they pop up. Let's start with the Colosseum, which is a big PVM wave-based challenge. And there are definitely some suspicious accounts here. I got a tip about one level 70 in particular, Word Strung Year. It's wielding full blessed dehyde, a magic short bow, and a fury. Its stats are all basically nothing except 77 ranged, 44 prayer, and stats for Abba's accumulator. It looks a lot like a classic Revenant or Undead Druid bot. And as you can see, no boss kill counts, but it has 608 Colosseum Glory. Glory isn't like kill counts. It's based on how far you get in the Colosseum and how well you did. I think things like speed and damage taken affect Glory as well. 608 is within the range of completing just the first wave. And this account appears almost every 90 seconds or so in the lobby, so it looks like it's just doing the first wave over and over again. Let's go investigate why it's doing that. So I hopped into my first attempt at the Colosseum. It actually shows you what loot you're gonna get from each wave beforehand, and the first wave's loot is always the same. 100 Sunfire Splinters, which is worth 100k. And the first wave is pretty short. Even if you're a mediocre PVMer, you shouldn't need too much food. If you can kill the group of three NPCs in the Major within 40 seconds, the crazy D-Claw Rusher NPC doesn't even spawn. But it takes me around 90 seconds to complete it. Add 30 seconds between trips, and I'd get about 3,000 Splinters per hour, making it 3 mil GP per hour. The Sunfire Splinters are used to charge some of the new items as well as to make the new Sunfire runes. Their price is definitely going to go down from 1k each, but will probably stay between 400 to 1000 GP, making this method still multiple mils per hour. So it makes sense as to why it would be botted. I also ran into a few people in game who mentioned they'd seen God Dehyde bots the day before, so the day after the Colosseum was released. I only found one, but it sounds like there were a lot more. Maybe they're taking a break or we're just banned. Overall, it makes sense as to why it's being botted so quickly as well, since the only requirement here is a three minute quest. But here's the much bigger thing I found out about the Colosseum. 72 hours after it was released, a bot script appeared and successfully completed the Colosseum, obtaining the new best in slot range cape, the Quiver. I got multiple tip-offs with this footage attached. I was pretty confused, like how could a relatively complicated script to make have been released so quickly? And I was curious how much money the scripter made developing such a script in such a timely manner. So I reached out to the creator of the script to get some answers, and luckily, he agreed to answer some questions. And we'll get into that right after this. These days, I'm wearing buttery soft shirts from Into the AM. You may know them for their graphic tees. They have dozens of original designs on their website that can add some creative expression to your wardrobe. I highly recommend you browse through. I'm sure you'll find something you like. Now, they sent me a bunch of shirts. I love this desert themed tee, and these shirts fit great around the shoulders. Into the AM also has some great long sleeve shirts that they sent me as well. Here's one of their athletic long sleeves in blue, and here's one of their long sleeve Henleys. All these shirts fit me incredibly well and are so comfortable because the fabric is just extremely soft. The company is frequently coming out with new designs. Here are some of February's latest design drops. It's worth noting that there are huge discounts if you buy these shirts in packs. Save over $40 with a six pack or over $65 with a nine pack. So click my link in the description to get 10% off these premium tees. Thanks to Into the AM for sponsoring this video. We're back. So how was the script made so quickly? It turns out this person was the same guy who made the Inferno bot script I covered a while ago. And the way the script was made so quickly has to do with how advanced these scripts are. I had no idea. I have simplified the game to its core, where I see it not as a game, but as a state machine, where player actions modified state. This view allows me to apply strategies from game theory books. This way I can create search algorithm frameworks that apply to multiple complex problems the game throws at me. Pay close attention to what he's about to say next. He's gonna be talking about the tiles with numbers on them in this footage. The tiles and numbers you see on the ground illustrate how the bot perceives its environment. These indicate where it deems safe to move to and where it sees danger. The bot arrives at these numbers by simulating potential future scenarios which were to move to those locations. This involves considering several factors. The amount of damage it might receive, the damage it, it could inflict, and whether it is around a strategic target at that point. After that, the bot knows what is the best move. Wait, so what you're saying is you don't figure out how to do the boss beforehand? Your algorithm figures it out? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the fun part. That's why it's so exciting to watch. 
because it utilizes mechanics you would never think about. For example, I'm not sure if streamers have started doing it, but you can use the outer edges of the map to create safe shots for the mobs there. So it's not only about using the pillars. The scripter explained to me that the numbers on the tiles you see in the footage are basically the algorithm's prediction of how good it is to stand on that tile. The scripter told me the higher the number, the better the tile it thinks it is. Each tick, it goes to the best tile. I compute that number by taking into consideration the path the player will take and simulate the game forward locally. So then I know where each mob will go, how the fight will change, and which mob will attack me. Then I take the result of it plus some of my heuristics and decide is it a good decision to go there or not. And as he said, the bot figured out there are non-pillar safe spots in the arena from some of the NPCs. Maybe good PVMers have already found this, but the point is, the bot figured it out without him having that game knowledge. All this dev infrastructure was already set up from the Inferno script and was repurposed for the Colosseum. And one of the biggest challenges of creating these scripts so quickly is the scripter actually learning the content for themselves to then understand what to actually code, especially when it's new content. And this script is obviously much more hands-off and figures out much of the movement mechanics for itself. The completion time here was around 30 minutes and the total loot ranges and we don't have exact numbers on it, but I've heard on average you get two to three mil per successful completion. And that's without uniques. So two runs per hour gets you four to six mil per hour without uniques. And there are plenty of valuable uniques, so the script could very easily make you over eight to 10 mil per hour. However, the scripter says this. When I write boss scripts, I want it to be fun. I always aim to challenge myself. I don't want to make a gold farm or something. It's not my intention. So he didn't create it for gold farming, more for players to cheat their way into getting a quiver which makes sense given the script is crazy expensive for only six hours of access. He told me the script is 175 euros, so it's insanely expensive, even more expensive than if you paid someone to get you an Infernal Cape, for example. Let's talk about how much money these scripts make the developer. Remember he created the Infernal bot around a year ago now. At first, he charged $200 for a day of access and then moved the price to $75 for six hours. So, how much are the sales? Yeah, I can't tell you from, yeah, it's. I have to like run SQL queries to like see, but it's a lot. I think I've made in game around 5,000 capes, even more. Let's say the average price was around $100, not closer to 200. Well, that means around $50,000 has come in from a script alone over the last year. And importantly, it wasn't a windfall all at once. <laughs> I was surprised. I thought people would buy and get their cape when the plugin came out and that would be it. <laughs> No one would buy it anymore. But nah, it's pretty consistent. So since sales have continued to come in pretty consistently, he'd expect plenty more income to continue after already earning $50,000. It's hard to say how much the Coliseum script will make. I mean, ideally less than $50,000 if y'all have some common sense and get the quiver yourselves, but otherwise I'd estimate a lot more given tens of thousands of Infernal Capes were already bought on the black market before he launched that script. Whereas the Coliseum is around the same difficulty, it's brand new and very few people know how to complete it. Well, it's not like life-changing, but it's like, it's still nice to like have some passive income. Now remember, botting is against the game rules and I highly encourage you not to do it. And I'm guessing ban rates for this script will be pretty high after this video, so don't go getting any ideas. You'll probably be banned. It really takes the fun out of achieving the quiver if you just bought it. What are these high-level bot-like accounts all doing in the wilderness? I got a tip that a bunch of level 100s were congregating southeast of the Ferox Enclave in a free-to-play world. So I rushed over. They're all wielding rune scimitars and it looks like maybe they've been attacking each other since some of them are scald and some aren't. The stats are in the 70s to 90s melee stats and they all have around 85 plus magic, 44 plus prayer, and 70-ish ranged. No other stats really, and they're just kind of standing here. So I attacked one to see what would happen. They do eat food, and they seem to have a lot of it, because it basically waited for a full two to three minutes until it was out of food, and then it ran back to the Ferox Enclave. Now, it took me forever, but I realized that this was in multi, so the guy who tipped me off, who was also there, and I could both attack one of the accounts at once and eventually like that we got a kill it didn't drop anything other than wines for food so i'm guessing these bots are not muling at least three of the bots though had the bugged soul wars blue circle under them which is kind of sus it's a known bug but why do they all have it especially since they don't have soul wars zeal pretty quickly though they all logged out one by one 
My best guess is they're training on each other since it's probably one of the faster free to play XP methods and wines are like one GP for 10 hit points basically. So it costs almost nothing. And there's a quick bank next to the Ferox Enclave. Strange to see them all grouped up like this though. So if you're checking out the new Valamore content and you see anything suspicious at all, or anything off of RuneScape that you see, let me know by sending a tip off to surpuggertipoff at gmail.com. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys soon.